We are at the confluence of the Ohio, Allegheny, and Monongahela Rivers at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, PA. And this was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with the Cleveland Browns. Set to go now in week six of the NFL season, and we are underway on EA Sports. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. The first carry now for Benny Snell. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27th. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high power, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points score gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. Third and two. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Ebron's got it. Fighting down past the... Defenders giving chase, but I don't think they're going to get there. And he takes this way down deep into Cleveland territory. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. First and goal at the nine-yard line. The Steelers were last in the NFL in red zone touchdown percentage a season ago, down around 35%. First and goal. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Olivier. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stock troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. Here's second and goal operating from the eight-yard line. A quick pass out to Juju. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds right at the three. With these run pass options, we often talk about a good quarterback and running back. Well, having a talented wide receiver helps also. Yeah, even coming in third in the discussion, sometimes that means he really should be first because all you want to do is get the ball in their hands and let them make the big plays downfield. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. He needed three, he got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. Well, on for the field goal. An 18-yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good. Had just the one big play on the drive, but that was enough to put him in field goal range. Yeah, one big play of what they hope will be many others throughout the game. Every team has a different target for the number of plays like that, those explosives that we talk about. That allowed them to put points on the board on that drive. Let's we'll see how the rest of the game goes. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Browns take over first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now first and 10 at their own 26. And he'll drop here to throw. Gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. First carry now for Kareem Hunt. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. 39-yard line. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. On second and nine, Mayfield. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. Bud Dupree coming in hard there on the blitz, and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Down. 
Mayfield in this Browns offense staring at a third and long now after the sack. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. He's airing it out for Williams. And he fires one that's intercepted. The safety, Terrell Edmonds, picks it. Then the return will be stopped at the 34-yard line. What a start defensively. Your offense goes out, gets the touchdown, and then you get the interception. Just perfect. How about the discipline that they showed on defense? Because after the offense scored to go up 7-zip, you would think they might be a little extra aggressive trying to get back at them. Instead, they read their keys well. When they took the shot downfield, they were more than prepared for that one. And nearly picked off there. Almost intercepted. Instead, second down. That's thrown to Smith-Schuster out wide. Five yards. Now it's third and five. That's probably as simple of a throw as he'll have all game. And good for everyone. Good for his completion percentage. Good for the receptions for the receivers. But you know how they work on that. They have footballs with no laces. So as soon as you get the snap, you're just throwing the football. All right? You're not trying to find the laces and grip it a certain way. That takes time. Just get the ball and throw it. So that's how they practice it all the time now, too. Look. Oh, well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. It's a gain of 26 as they pick up the first down in the process. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 35-yard line. Roethlisberger here finding Johnson. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Johnson. Good catch by Deontay Johnson, and he really helped fill a void during his rookie season when he had 59 catches that led the team and his first among all rookie receivers last season as well. Not bad for the 10th wide receiver selected in the 2019 draft. Really good play. Expects to continue to get better in his Pittsburgh offense. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. And three. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10. And a very good return as he takes us all the way up to the 35-yard line. Unfortunately for him, if last week was any indication, we knew a pick was coming at some point. Last week, it was interception after interception, and here we go again. We actually quit counting last <laughs> week at a certain point because I thought I was going to run out of fingers, all right, because I'm not less skilled as a mathematician. But you're right. It felt like a matter of time, and you got to think the guys on defense, they couldn't wait for this opportunity after what they saw on tape. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. They get nine yards back on the run there, and they're left with a much more makeable third and two. Brings up third down. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And some room to work. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. 34 yards there and a first down. They only needed a couple, but the blocking was good. And, of course, you can't tamp him down when he gets past that line of scrimmage. No, and guess what? Not only were they physical at the point of attack, they executed so well. That's what you have to do in short yardage situations. Everyone has to be in the right spot taking on a defender to give him the chance that they did, and he took full advantage of it. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. At the 23-yard line. Mayfield to throw it. 
And he's got his tight end. It's Hooper for the Browns touchdown. To number 81, Austin Hooper. Austin Hooper, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Browns have taken the lead. He's got it, and they'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it 7 to 3. Steelers 3. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. 25 yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. They'll come up now, second and four from the 31. Now a give here to Snyder. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Third and two, now Roethlisberger. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. How about the big boys snagging one? You don't see that every week. No, you don't, but a lot of them are just reliving their old dreams, going back to when they were in youth football and in high school. They didn't always play defensive line. Some of them actually handled the football, and you can see the flashback when he grabbed that one. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. The Pro Bowl tight end, Zach Ertz, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. From the gun, it's a give to Chubb. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. Nelson on the tackle. A gain of 12. First down, Browns. After one, 7-3 the score on EA Sports. Steelers, three. Mayfield on play action. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time. And that'll bring up second down. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit him over the top, unsuccessfully. Back of the end zone, could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coach is always talking about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point or, in this case, a field goal. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Tay Johnson on the return. The Steelers take over first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. 
The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. So they saw the contact before the ball arrived. Penalty flag for pass interference. And trying to avoid pass interference is so difficult. You're trying to slow down these skilled receivers. And somehow, some way, they make plays on the football. And sometimes you're there too soon. It's a loss of a yard there. And now second down. From back at the four, here's second and goal. At the Browns, four yard line. On second and goal, they'll give it to him again. And he gets halfway home from the four down to the two yard line. The two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. And this will be caught by his big tight end, Ebron, for a Steeler touchdown. Eric Ebron. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Steelers are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And he puts it through. That ties the game at 10. All level now at 10 apiece as the kicks away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. 25-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. And last time able to get three. That's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Second and six, just inside the 30. Mayfield off the play fake. Caught by the tight end Ertz. Mayfield's that throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. The Browns on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Mayfield looks to throw. He rifles one that's intercepted. Joe Hayden, the veteran, with a pick. And they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. The Steelers take over first and 10 at the 46-yard line. After the interception, here's Roethlisberger. He's going to rifle one. And this is caught. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Chase Claypool, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Steelers are going to take the lead. Extra point put through by Boswell. And that makes it a 17-10 score. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Browns drive about to get started. They find themselves down 17-10 as they come up on a first and 10. They'll begin the drive with Hunt. Breaks a tackle. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Ball carrier. And result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, 
You're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. From the 29, Mayfield. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 15 yards on the play, first down. And, the and there's a completion to Austin down. Hooper. What a big-time acquisition for this offense in Cleveland. Came from Atlanta as a two-time Pro Bowler. Had nearly 800 yards in receptions and six touchdowns last year. And he spent a lot of time with his quarterback in order for them to get on the same page on every snap. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. He finds some open field here. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Zach Ertz. His second touchdown on the season. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying this thing up. And it's up and good. That ties the game at 17. 17-17 the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. On the return, the Steelers take over first and 10 at their own 29-yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And Charles, the way touchdowns have come so fast and furious for both sides in this thing, it's starting to feel a little bit more like maybe a tennis match in a football game. Yeah, I like your description there. Maybe we're sitting in a nice royal box watching this type of a game. But let's face it, right now, the way it's going back and forth, it's going to come down to who can get a stop. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. They'll go with Snell here on first down. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Brown's territory. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Four yards on the pickup. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at the Browns' 40-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Decided to hand it off that time on the run-pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice, steady gain. On first down. Snell, they'll wind up getting four down to the 36. Snell, the ball carrier. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you could do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you're scrambling a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? Roethlisberger quickly to the flat, and he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. Third down and six. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Looking deep here. Oh, man, it's caught at the six-yard line. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Three first-half touchdown passes now for Ben Roethlisberger. And the Steelers are going to take the lead. And he knocks it through. Makes the score. Steelers 24. Browns 17. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. 25-yard line.
The Browns drive about to get started. These two teams trading touchdowns here in what has been a back and forth first half. And ordinarily, we're trying to figure out how to break out of a stalemate. Here, you're trying to figure out if you can slow someone down while continuing your breakneck face on offense. I know one thing. The people in the crowd, they're getting their money's worth right now. And the fantasy owners like it. Oh, without a doubt. They're just tallying them up, aren't they? <laughs> they're watching this game. The loss of three on that first down pass play. Now second and 13. Play fake. Mayfield. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. T.J. Watt, the all-pro, in there to take him down. They just gave up a sack there. And if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And They're just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are. And I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe a back, someone to help assist. Because right now... And Mayfield again with the interception. His third... The safety, Terrell Edmonds, picks it. And they will finally put it into the return, but not until he takes it back all the way inside the 10-yard line. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. Only a yard on the pickup there, second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. On second down, it's Snell. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Now here's Snell, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Benny Snell, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do anticipating will we have to make the call they already had it lined up never even got to it Browns take over first and 10 at their own 25 yard line the Browns drive about to get started it was still more than a minute to go in the half time to try to mount a drive and I would think that they would have to this is today's NFL you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity you can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. At the 23-yard line. At the 23, it's second and 12. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. On first and 10, Mayfield. He's going to dump this off to his running back, Hunt. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and it'll make it a second down. At the 43-yard line. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun, Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the gun, Mayfield escaping the pressure right. He'll run it, and he is out of bounds inside the 30. Number the improv six, on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Out of bounds at the 29-yard line. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. Back 
Looking to throw again on second down. Mayfield. He's got a man complete. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Austin Hooper in the final seconds of the first half. And the Browns have cut it back within a score. Extra point by Seibert, up and good. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. So just eight ticks remaining here in the first half as they'll kick this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Take over first and 10 at their own 23-yard line. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. Time for a final kneel down or a safe run, and then they can head to the locker room with a lead. Yeah, or they can even run a screen. You know, something they feel is somewhat safe that might actually pop and turn into a big play, that's what you usually run in this situation. We're going four verticals because why not? Because you're feeling it, right? You're just feeling it. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Jones on the return. The Browns take over first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now first and 10 right at the 30. They'll start the third quarter on the ground with Hunt. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what well, you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. You tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Throwing Mayfield. And he'll take a shot here for Hooper downfield. And they will finally get him as he's all the way down near the 40-yard line. So a holding penalty, and that'll send him backwards. You know they're trying not to do that. I mean, we know that, right? We talk to them all the time. But sometimes the defensive guys just put you in awkward situations, and you get caught grabbing their jerseys. And look at this, they come right back with a big shot downfield. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and 10. On the handoff, it's Snell. Down to the 30 after a gain of three. Benny Snell, the ball Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up. Found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. They're going to run again with Snell, and he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time, forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. On third down, Roethlisberger. And the throw there going to be incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. A 48-yard attempt. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. So good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point or, in this case, a field goal. 
And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. The Browns take over first and 10 at their own 21-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For us up here in the booth, it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinator is probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now. But let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. And again, it's Chubb. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. And a nice carry and a first down for Cleveland. A nice pickup there by Nick Chubb, who's a bright spot for this Cleveland offense. He finished second in the league in rushing in 2019 with nearly 1,500 yards on the ground and got into the end zone eight times. And how about this for durability? Has not missed a game in his NFL career. What a bounce back from a big-time knee injury while at the University of Georgia. Give him seven on the play, and that'll make it second down. But he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. They go with Chubb on second down, and he'll get this pretty close to a first down as he's tackled at the Steelers' 38. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Mayfield gives this one to Hunt, and he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. Hunt, the ball carrier. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Here's Mayfield. This one complete to Devin Funches. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 21. A gain of 13. It's a first down. First down. Mayfield firing quickly. It's complete. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion at the 14-yard line. On second and two, Mayfield. And it's caught. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Mayfield finding Hooper there for a Cleveland first. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll give it to Chubb. And he's in. Touchdown, Browns. Nick Chubb, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Browns are back within a score. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there, and each guy has his own assignment that allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. At their own 25-yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Their lead down to a field goal now as they start with a first and ten. Starting the drive with Snell. And he'll 
wind up with about six up past the 30 to the 31. The ball carrier. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. From the 31, Roethlisberger is going to fire, and this will be caught at the 30. And all the way down to the 26. It's a big play there for the Steelers. 42 yards. First and 10 at the 26. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Open man completes it to Smith Schuster. And he is out of bounds right around the 10 yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. First and 10 at the 10 yard line. They'll run on first down. Snell. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. It's second and in shoes. Here's Snell yet again. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. That's a nice example of good team defense right there. Ball was snapped at the one-yard line. They knocked him back and caused a loss. But you notice they were trying to find any type of a gap to run through. Wasn't one available, and they stuffed the play right there in the middle of the field. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They only got two, but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal. The Steelers were last in the NFL in red zone touchdown percentage a season ago, down around 35%. It's first and goal. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, it's apparent the defense understands the situation. They have to keep them out of the end zone here. That's a great start by them. A loss on that play. Can they force them into a field goal attempt and still give their offense? And he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. James Conner, his first touchdown on the year. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead circle that drive because that might be one to remember well executed to give him a little cushion well, let's take it into the boxing ring you talk about them commanding it keeping the fight where they wanted to whether it was in the center of the ring or put them on the ropes because it was jab 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 and finally the haymaker to put that drive away back now in pittsburgh where the fourth quarter will begin with a kickoff following the score on the final play of the third quarter And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Browns drive about to get started. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. They'll start with Hunt on the ground. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them a first down. I tell you, they didn't give it to him much for the first three quarters, but when they have, he's been efficient. Maybe they ride him more here down the stretch. Yeah, I'm not sure it was actually in the game plan for him to have as few carries as he has, but it might play out really well for them now. As you noted, they want to ride him down the stretch. He should have fresh legs. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Sean Davis. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Second and nine at the 39-yard line. They give the chub out of the gun. 
And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 11 yards there, first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A nice gain of 21 yards. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. one down to the 28 and that's all Devin Bush the Steelers leading tackler as a rookie last year gets another there brings up has a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass they saw it coming converged on him before he could get much out of it They'll run with Hunt on second down. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. He was brought down. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Brings up third down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. He'll leave it for Hunt, complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified, big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Zach Ertz, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Browns have cut it back within a score. And that was a beautiful ball right there as he waited for his tight end to come uncovered in the end zone. So give him points for patience as well. Delivered it right where it needed to be for six points. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Charles, you said earlier this defense is probably going to need to hold these guys right around 20 or under that if they were going to have a chance. It was evident pretty early on that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, they left 20 behind a long time ago in this game, didn't they? It looks like they're headed towards a big, big number. But 20 was the threshold because that kept them in the ball game and kept the pressure off of their own offense. Now the pass finding its way into the hands of Eric Ebron. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. At the 49-yard line. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Snell on the shotgun handoff. 
Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. And the Steelers on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This is third and nine. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. And that will be incomplete. The one with the dive look that time on defense just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Sets up fourth down. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. And that's what friends are for. <laughs> As the returner, you know who you're buying dinner for later. Oh, without a doubt, because he just took care of you and your team in a big way. You know, you turned it over there. That's a big momentum changer and put your defense in a bad spot. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb fighting through. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. And he's dropped just shy of the 25 at the 24. It's a first down on a gain of 10. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Now after the run by Hunt, here's first and 10. And now here's a carry heading left. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. The ball carrier. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game. Trying to establish the inside run. Run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. From the 27, Mayfield. And finding the tight end, Hooper. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. To Austin Hooper. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Back-to-back -back reception for him and it's another first down three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth so the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset and let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over and oh a crusher there as it's intercepted Picked off at the 21. And he will take this across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. I think you and I were a little surprised back earlier in the game when he threw his second interception. I mean, who would have thought a quarterback of his caliber picked now five times? It's beyond stunning to me because we're used to that with maybe a quarterback with less experience or less talent. But a quarterback of his caliber? I can't believe what we've just seen. Absolutely. If you would have told me this coming into the ball game, I would have said never, not in a million years, but here we go. In any event, it happened pretty quickly. I'm not sure he made the right decision on that one. I think if he had it to do over again, he would have found a different target downfield, but he made his decision, and that one's incomplete. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, 
They've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. A gain of 13, it's a first down. I guess he was saving his best for last, so to speak. Longest run of the day coming here in the fourth quarter right there. And that type of run makes for a better night for him and his teammates, doesn't it? To be able to produce this late in the game can lead to some big smiles and satisfaction in the locker room after this one's over. On first down, Snell. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. It's a gain of Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front. Good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Second down now, Snell. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as he'll stop it with 13 seconds left to play. Try to run for it with Snell. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. And a timeout coming in. This will be their final one with 10 seconds remaining. Fourth down and one. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. Yard attempt. kick is indeed good and that will double their lead as it's up to six so he remains perfect three for three in the field goal department and it's so important for any offense to have an ace like him up their sleeve isn't it because now you know what his range is and as soon as your offense gets there you're pretty much counting on three points going up on the board at their own 25 yard line The Browns drive about to get started. They have time here, partner, for just one final heave. And I have to look at from the defense's perspective here. We know what they're going to do on offense. The Hail Mary, try and get guys down there and throw it in the end zone, tip it around and catch it. You've got to have... And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. The safety Terrell Edmonds picks it. And he will be out of bounds here with zeros on the clock as this ball game is over. 44. Well, we were on hand for a fun and entertaining game here. Coming down really to that last play. Great job defensively to get the pick and seal it. And we know that every play during a game matters. You're never sure which one's going to be one of the key ones. But at the end of the game, when you analyze it, three, four, five plays are going to be the ones you focus on. And that last play was one of them. The last shot had to take it. And they came up with the interception and sealed their victory. So for the Steelers, their good start continues as they get their record up to 4-2. and two. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Baltimore Ravens. Meanwhile, for the Browns, the loss here will move them back to 500 at 3-3. Three and, three. and they'll try to turn things around next week.